<laughs> well, hello and welcome to the start of another weekly reading vlog and this guy wanted to say hi. So, it's going to be a good week. I have faith. Gotta have faith. I have some goals. It's the last week for OWLs. I think technically I actually have all of the qualifications I need to be a professor, but I figure why stop now? I am picking up This is How You Lose the Time War. I'm only five pages in and I'm really liking the vibes. I, I know it can be a confusing read and if you're not new here, you know that's my jam. I love to be confused. Also, don't know what those sounds were, but I'm excited for this. I also need to get books off my Kindle. So I'm going to read The Dragon Reborn this week. I'm doing it, it's getting off this Kindle. I am reading the third book in The Wheel of Time this week. And that's only like 700 pages. So I feel like I will have time to read A Man Called Ove or Ove. I actually don't know. Anyone who is from, I think it's Sweden. I think that's where Frederick Bachman's from. I could be really wrong. I get the S countries in Northern Europe confused a lot because I'm, I'm from the US. So apparently I'm bad at geography, but I want to read this and I think it'll be good to pair it with both of these because I got a really confusing read and I got a really dense read and I think this is like kind of a cozy contemporary, not cozy, but feel good contemporary. And I know I really liked his writing style before. So these are my goals. I have goals. I also have a cat who's needing a blanket. So really, what more could I want? I will check in as I have read things. Okay, quick check in. I'm like halfway through this, which I also remember in the previous clip, I didn't tell you guys, this is Care of Magical Creatures. Got some beaks. And, ooh, is this intriguing? I'm like kind of on a sci-fi kick in general right now, so I think I'm in like the right mindset because I just started Westworld season three yesterday and yeah, it's gonna, I think it's gonna be a lot better than season two. Not that I hated season two. I just, season one was so strong. Anyways, I digress. But I'm in a sci-fi mood and this, I can see this being overwhelming for people who are not as used to just letting go. Um, Najiri from Onyx Pages, she was describing this as you just, you know, you have to just go with the riptide, I think is what she described it as. But there are, there's a lot of confusing things going on here, and if you need to know all the answers right now, you will be frustrated. <laughs> now me, I'm like going with it, because the things I do know, I'm comfortable with. Um, what it seems to me like is, so if you've seen Terminator, it seems like we just have these two agencies that live in two different futures who keep sending back their agents to change the timeline for their futures to be successful. And two of these agents, Red and Blue, um, start communicating and foiling each other's plans and it's about how that relationship develops and there's a lot I don't know but that's the gist and I'm having a great time probably will finish it by the end of the day if not tomorrow it depends the uh, the letters they exchange are really nice and I just like to sit with them and it's really great also uh, from uh, Princess Da, I'll, I'll put her link below. She was so sweet and she sent me these beautiful copies of His Dark Materials. Um, this is all three books in one bind up and I really love it. And I haven't read this one yet, but this is the Book of Dust. She was getting rid of these and I just mentioned like, oh, that's one of my favorite series. If you do a giveaway, let me know. And she just sent them to me and I just think that's so sweet and I hope to be in a position to do that one day and give out some booktube love. So that's my quick check-in before they start banging on my door again. All right, bye. Well, I finished This Is How You Lose the Time War and oh, my heart. <laughs> I, I don't really, I'll have to really compile my thoughts for my wrap-ups, but uh, it's really good. Uh, I think, I don't, so I never found myself that confused, but I also just found my, so half of it is in the world, jumping through the timeline, doing whatever, like the fight between their two factions, and the other half is just their letters to each other, and I was just so caught up in their love letters to each other, essentially. I mean, they don't start that way, it's, it is still a slow burn romance, and, ah. Uh, 
anyways, um, it's pretty short, so I don't really want to spoil anything, but I guess I'm not someone who reads things out loud, but there was a letter at the end that I had to read out loud, because I just felt like it going by too fast and my brain wouldn't do it justice. Like, the emotions in here, that they're so good, um, it, it, you really believe it, if that makes sense. I, man. <laughs> and... I don't know. I'm, I'm curious to see what people say who really don't like it. Obviously, their opinions are valid. I just, it's weird that I ended up connecting to it and caring about it more on an emotional level than I did on a sci-fi level. Like, the sci-fi is very cool, and I think it was explained, explained enough for the purpose of this story. Would it be cool to have a longer book with these worlds and this kind of conflict? Of course, that would be fascinating, but... For the purpose of this story, which is just the relationship between these two, I think we got just enough. I think any more and we lose the focal point of the story. And I just, I mean, this is a library book. There's a part of me that's like, hmm, I should get a copy so I can read it again. And I don't, I'm not big for love stories, but this one, man, maybe it's just weird enough to get to me. <laughs> that's a longer check-in than I expected, but yeah. I'll see you guys in a bit. And the next one is The Dragon Reborn. Guess what, guys? It's Friday. Not that time matters, but it matters a little bit because Friday is when I get takeout food and I'm pretty excited. So before I go over to the boyfriends to watch more Westworld Season 3 because it's awesome, I thought I'd do a quick check-in. So I've been reading The Dragon Reborn. I am now at Chapter 10, so 115 pages in. And... Boy, I have such a bipolar relationship with the writing style of Robert Jordan. Like, this isn't news, his writing style is very detailed, I guess is the right word. But if you're like me, detailed writing is work. It's a lot of work, and you don't get a lot of payoff. Like, I have to read a bunch of details that I will never visually see, and it's just a lot of work. <laughs> but there's also a lot of cool stuff, and yeah, it's just weird. I never know how I feel because, at least so far, um, for those who don't know, The Wheel of Time is a 14 book series. I am now at book three, so early, early days, and these first three books I have heard, and can confirm to some degree, are more tied to classical fantasy tropes. You know, the um, quest storylines to the, we need to go to the place to get X to accomplish this task based on this prophecy or whatever. Like, it's a lot like that. The first book is very, um, it pays a lot of homage to the Fellowship of the Ring, um, I would say. Um, but it's supposed to become its own new thing. I don't know what's going to happen there because I've been avoiding spoilers like the plague. <laughs> but what that's meant is if you are new here or if I haven't talked about it much, I'm not as into classical fantasy plots. I, They never interest me that much. So when we are always on a journey, I am always very bored. <laughs> So I don't love journeying plots that much, no matter how you dress them up. But I am starting to actually really connect to these characters. I think each book does improve on the last, because this one's by far my favorite so far. There are really cool magic things being explored, and the one thing that is working in my favor is if I miss something, Jordan will just say it again later eventually. I know if I miss something, he will explain it further down the line, because he's pretty redundant. And honestly, that works, because I do miss things. There are a lot of words, and my brain just can't retain all of them. <laughs> and it's been nice, because I am buddy reading it with Stephanie from Miss Richards Reads. So I had a question about, like, this character who we've, like, met, and I couldn't remember if he was meant to be this other character with, like, a different name. And I was like, is that supposed to be them, or is it someone else? And I was scared of Googling, and they were able to answer my question. So that was nice. So yeah, I have a very mixed relationship with this series, but so far... I'm getting back into the groove of reading it, and I am enjoying this third book. I still don't know. I wish there was intrigue or plot to keep me going besides the magic um, world building and the characters, because I, I just wish I had a little more, because honestly, so far, each book, I don't really know what the point of it is. Does that make sense? Like, it just ends up being a whole lot of things are happening here, and then something big happens, so now we have to go over here, and then something else, you know what I'm saying, like, it's, um, it's very much like a Dungeons and Dragons campaign, which, which those types of campaigns are based off Lord of the Rings and Wheel of Time, right, so they 
take inspiration from things like this, but it's just that kind of disjointed storytelling that is hard for me to hold on to, but I am having a good time. It's just these are my rambly Wheel of Time thoughts that I don't think I've had on the channel yet, so I just felt like, here you guys go. And also, I started reading The Deep by Rivers Solomon. I have read their work, Unkindness of Ghosts, last year, early last year, like January. I think it was the, my first book of 2019. And they have a really good sci-fi writing style. Like, I really enjoyed them. And this one, so this story, in a nutshell, so far, it's a novella, so I'm not going to say a lot because it's only 170 pages, is about a girl who is, I can't remember the name of the species of creature they are, but essentially sort of mermaid. And they are basically the descendants of children that are over are thrown overboard slave ships as they would travel from Africa to the Americas, I think. I think that's the part of the triangle that they're talking about. Regardless, these are the descendants of babies that were thrown overboard because of slavery. And one of them, one of these um, mermaids, gets to be the history keeper, and that's the character we're following. And what's really fascinating is the toll that takes on her, how that's integrated into this culture. Like, once a year, they get to all know all the history, but then the history taker takes it back because it's kind of a heavy toll. So they have kind of more short-term memory, so that's really cool. But also, so, if you aren't new here, you know I did a video on electric eels and how they use electricity to make shocks for, like, electric magic. Well, they also use that for communication which I didn't go into in that video, but I learned about that. And that type of science is used here for how these people communicate. It's more through these electrical pulses, which is basically like the electric eels thing I talked about. So I'll, I'll put that up in the cards if you're at all interested, but I'm just geeking out that I learned a thing and it's relevant in this book. So that's cool. So although it is like a mermaid creature thing, I am like using my more I know I say it like this, but I have, like, when I read a fantasy book, I'm in a certain headspace, and when I read a science fiction book, I'm in another headspace. I'm using my science fiction head to read this. Like, not saying it has to be that genre of fantasy. It's just that's the the mental state I'm in, and so it's good. I'm enjoying it. So, yeah. I did get the audiobook, but I love David Diggs, obviously. Hamilton, great. But I was just having an issue connecting with the story. I just needed to really have my own narrator voice do it for me. So I ended up not pairing it with the audiobook like I thought I would, which is why I got to it faster than initially planned. And yeah, that's my check-in. Gonna go watch Westworld 3. Also, this shirt is really funny. One of the oldest, funniest shirts I own. Got the TARDIS and the DeLorean getting into a time crash. If you don't get those references, I will happily explain it to you. But if you are someone who geeks out about Doctor Who, then you will find it funny, I think. Anyways, this is a longer check-in than I thought, but yeah, check in with you a bit. Well, it is Monday night, so I think I'm going to wrap up the vlog here. So, since I last checked in, I was, I think, about 80 pages into the deep, and I devoured that on Saturday. I didn't check in right afterwards, because, like, the day, weekend got away from me, but I loved that book. Whoa. Like, how did it not get nominated for BookTube SFF short work? Like, I'm not sure if it would, I guess, be it out the ones that like are my favorite right now but it is the amount of quality world building and relationship building that happens in that 160 page little novel is so fantastic it's like you don't feel like it needs to be longer and you don't feel like you really missed out on much it was impeccable like I do think I like the deep more than unkindness of ghosts by rivers Solomon it was really good you really should pick it up I just and also, the way that they can, like, meld a fantasy monster concept with scientific explanation. Like, River Solomon and N.K. Jemisin both do this very well, and I want more authors to do it because I just really like it. And it's just so cool. But I really like The Deep, if that was not clear. And I have made really good progress on The Dragon Reborn, but I'm just not going to be finishing that in this vlog. It's just not happening. I'm only 42% of the way through. But my thoughts from before still stand. This is my favorite one so far. But if I can't pronounce her name, Nynaeve or whatever, she plays with her braid one more time. Like, this is not a spoiler. It's just Jordan can be repetitive. And 
he really wants you to be there. So if a character, he's written a tick, he's just going to say it like a million times. Like, I'm not kidding. It's been 200 pages. I think I have heard her tug or pull or play with her braid like 20 times. And I get it. It's her nervous tick. I mean, I play with my hair all the time. I just don't feel like I need to read it. So, but Jordan does that stuff like that all the time that bothers me. But overall, I'm really enjoying the more magic system building. And just as I was saying in um, a book meetup I was just at, it's just, it is good. I'm still really enjoying it, still liking it. I think part of my issue with it is, although I can see this as a foundational fantasy series that I am enjoying, I've read so many things that have built and improved upon what Jordan has done that, like, for me, I just, I don't think yet... I have experienced the discovery that other people have because it's, I don't know how to say it, but it's just like, I just feel like I am reading things that are very similar to other things I have consumed. And since the writing style it doesn't blow me away, if anything, the writing style is a chore. It's just, you know, I, I just don't know when I'm going to read a book in this series that would be a five star book. I just feel like they're all going to be three and a half or four that makes sense, which I don't mind for the journey of it, especially since there's going to be a TV show. But it's just very interesting to me, because this also, like, happens to me with, like, Lord of the Rings, where I, I know it's a fundamental, foundational book, but because it's more literary, really hard for me to process, and I have read them all, and I have read them all as an adult, so not, like, as a kid, and I just threw it away. Like, I read them when I was 24. That's when I finally was able to sit down, focus, and read them all. And I do actually really love the fight scenes in those, but in general, it was kind of like, this world building isn't as cool to me because everyone's rehashed it a million different ways. In some ways, I just already had found cooler than this, which is unfair to it, right? Because it's the granddad, like it's the one that did it first. But because it wasn't as accessible to me, it doesn't get to be as loved in my heart, and I feel bad. But I feel like that's what's happening with Wheel of Time. And... Earlier this week, I read This Is How You Lose the Time War, which also adored. I have no clue if that or The Deep has left a bigger impact on me this week. They both kind of hurt my heart. They both had very touching relationships in them. I think I like, like, as a science fiction fantasy book, I think I liked The Deep more. But as, like, just, like, a romantic, abstract, literary book, I liked... This is how you lose the time more and more. It was, they were both great, like, escape days when I, because I think I read each of them in, like, one to two days. So that was really cool. And I haven't mentioned this earlier in the vlog, but I have started the second book in the First Law Trilogy in my audio thing. I'm only, like, a fourth of the way through. And I, I'm really liking it. Doesn't really feel like a different book. <laughs> so all my thoughts from the first book exist here. I just, I'm just enjoying myself. It's just nice to be with these voices and in this world. Um, for those who haven't read The First Law, this is a what people call a grimdark series and it's super character focused. So if you look into picking up the blade itself, which is the first one that I already talked about in previous vlogs and wrap-ups, do not expect a plot. The plot takes a long time to show up. Like we're talking potentially the third book to show up. So just know that, like, you really have to know that, because I really didn't know that going in my first time, and I really didn't like it, but I've been rereading these, and with the audiobook by this amazing narrator, it's just been pleasant. So that's really what I've been reading and consuming. I am up to date on Westworld, well, almost. I guess I didn't watch this Sundays, but it's amazing. It's one of my favorite sci-fi things to consume right now. It's just given me, like... The first two seasons are so cool because you have all of that, like, the park stuff, the park tension. You know, very Jurassic Park, but with droids sort of thing. But now I'm very Blade Runner, but, like, and it's just... But Blade Runner, but, like, with AI, like, systems. It's, basically, my sci-fi heart is very happy about Westworld. <laughs> and we're also working on the third season of Sabrina. And that show just, like, it was just being, like fun bananas like my Buffy sort of feeling like just nonsense going on in the beginning of this season and then it got real dark real serious real quick and I was unprepared so last night we watched some episodes that I, I am hurt a little bit I don't know what's gonna happen we still have like two episodes left of that so I guess that's like some other stuff I've done this week so yeah 
I hope you guys are doing well. If there's any fun books or TV stuff you want to highlight down below, if you have your own version of weekly wrap-ups, just, you know, point me to them. I want to know because I like to live vicariously through others, just like you do. At least that's what I'm assuming because that's why I read and watch BookTube. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great week. Bye.